In another solid month of job gains here in the United States, the economy, as you heard, added 213,000 jobs last month, beating economists' estimates of 195,000. The unemployment rate did tick up to 4 percent, while economists predicted it would hold steady at that 3.8 percent level. What does the June jobs report tell us about the health of the U.S. economy? Joining us, Bill Rogers. He's with Rutgers University. Uh, and a former chief economist at the U.S. Department of Labor. And Joe Watkins is GOP strategist and former White House aide to President George H.W. Bush. Good to see you both. Thanks Thank for joining you. us Thanks here. Thanks for having me. With you. So, Bill, any way you look at it, this is a good report. Oh, yes, I agree. Right? Uh, except for? Wage growth. Yes. <laughs> so why uh, is that? We'll cut to that chase there. We've been talking about that. I mean, yeah. it, it just defies economics to, to see... This low a level of employment, this tight a labor market, and yet no, no real wage inflation. Well, I don't think it defies it. I think you have to look beyond just the unemployment rate, right? We have the U6 unemployment rate that the Bureau of Labor Statistics publishes, and that includes about 4.5 million Americans who are working part-time, but they want to work full-time. So that's 7.8% right it, now. Exactly. Yeah. It ticked up. Uh, and then you have another 1.4 million Americans who are, uh, we call them wanted jobs. You know, they, they've stopped searching because they're discouraged. And we still have about, I think, a fifth of the, the metropolitan areas that the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, can identify as unemployment rates. They still have unemployment rates above 7%. Uh, and the other thing that's happened, too, in this recovery compared to the 1990s recovery that Richard Freeman from Harvard and I looked at was that uh, we have a whole host of cities or metropolitan areas that have unemployment rates around 6 to 5 percent, about 4 to 5 percent. In the 1990s, they were below 4 percent. Mm -hmm. Today, they're still in that sort of 6 to 5 percent range. So this tightening that we saw in the 1990s, which really then lead, led to uh, you know, uh, upward pressure on wages. You know, we haven't seen it in, in many communities. Joe, you know, what do you think about that? And especially when you consider the, the tightness of the labor market in certain sectors, and we see all the hiring signs out there, we have more jobs available than we have workers out there. Shouldn't wage inflation be a bigger factor at this point? What do you think? Well, well, I think Bill raises a, a great point, but I'm, I'm really uh, encouraged by, uh, by uh, the numbers that I see. I mean, I, I think it's a good thing uh, when you uh, when you see the labor force participation rate uh, tick up as it did from 62.7 percent to 62.9 percent, we had something like 600,000 new entrants into the workforce uh, in the in, in the last month. That's a good thing, I think. Uh, there are lots of people out there that want to work. They're finding jobs. That's a that's a good thing, I think. It, it shows the strength of the economy, uh, and uh, I, I like the strength of the of the of the business and professional services se uh, sectors, uh, and I also like the strength of uh, of healthcare. I mean, I, those those are areas that are doing really well with regards to uh, to new jobs. So I, I'm really encouraged by. It. I think it's a good sign that the economy is strong and continuing to. To, to get stronger. Isn't there a silver lining, uh, though, Bill, in terms of the wage inflation number not being as strong? Because it sort of gives the Fed a little bit of cover. I mean, if the tariff, uh, if the trade war becomes more fully developed, let's say, <laughs> and inches more towards the $500 billion of goods in addition to what has already been in place, then it allows the Fed to say, you know what, maybe that December hike could be off the table. Right now, the markets are pricing in one and a half hikes for the rest of the year. Right, right. Yeah, if you look at uh, you know, sort of this, this report and you blow it up, I mean, it does suggest that the Fed can really keep hold its powder on, uh, you know, one and a half or two more, you know, two more rate hikes. Um, but there are some other, you know, sort of headwinds beyond just the sort of tariff tiff. I will call it a tiff for now. Right, right. Um, and, and that is uh, we're pursuing a, an immigration policy that is anti-growth. Uh, I go back to that little basic model of that, we, that you learn in Econ 101. Economic growth is the, is the sum of population growth and productivity growth. And so you, by the way we're pursuing, some of our immigration policies we're pursuing, we're going to have people pushing have a retarding effect on the population piece. Uh, the other piece is that the Department of Justice today, or the other day, uh, made, you know, pulled out the guidance with regards to affirmative action in higher education. Why is that important? That's also an anti-growth or potentially an anti-growth approach because even though it hasn't changed the formal policy that colleges can use, Race as any as many mm -hmm. factors to decide to decide admissions. You all you still have a whole host of individuals who uh, you know need that boost. And now mm -hmm. also the thing about what's interesting about affirmative action and creating diverse environments. My daughter just graduated from Columbia. I teach at Rutgers. I haven't taught a minority a majority a majority minority class or a majority white class in about ten years. And so so what so what's happening is. Not only does diversity provide great opportunities for minorities, because of the way globalization is occurring, 
with the World Cup, seeing all the different com right. cultures, um, globalization occurring, and also the, how our demography of our country is changing, right? Yeah. Whites also will benefit from diverse environments. Joe, uh, if this isn't full employment, and Bill doesn't seem to think it is, I'm putting words, or maybe I'm taking words out of your mouth, if this isn't full employment, what is? Well, uh, no, we're, it looks pretty close to full employment. It's not, actually. I mean, I, 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 I agree with Bill. And, and I also agree with Bill, Bill's assessment of the affirmative action uh, policies. Of the, uh, any rollback to affirmative action, I think, you know, is a real, uh, is, is a negative uh, in general for the economy and for the society. Uh, at the end of the day, you don't want any impediments to people of color or to anybody, to your best and brightest, uh, having a chance to move forward and to, and to, to be everything that they can be. And uh, I'm, I'm old enough to remember a time when, when uh, people in my father's generation, no matter how good their scores were, just couldn't attend certain colleges and universities. And, and, and thankfully that changed uh, during my lifetime, but, but I don't want to see that get rolled back. I want to see it uh, so that, that going forward that uh, the best and brightest without regard to color uh, have a chance to go to the best schools and to get the best education so they can um, help our, our society move forward. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.